Welcome to The Path to God, The Book of Light. There is a law, dear friends, and we are under that law, if you like it or not. Compare it to a man from the jungle who never saw a city and he crosses the street at red light. And of course a car may come and drives him down. So he didn't know the law not to cross the street at red light. That didn't change anything. So ignorance about the law does not change what happens to you or not. So you better know about the law, cosmic law. And then you will be prepared for all kinds of problems, confrontations and so forth. And of course the basic of that law is karma and reincarnation. We are all under the swing, under the momentum of karma and reincarnation. Whatever you do, think, feel, will return to you sooner or later. And then you will know if it was the right thing to do, to feel, to think. This is how the law works. You may not like it. The law doesn't bother. And we have high, exalted men. We have masters who help us to live according to the law. Who help us to understand And one way of understanding is the Book of Light, dictated to me by the Maha Chohan. Who is that? We will find out. It's a high being who knows past, present and future. Now, we have three parts, or should I say columns, of the law. And it helps us to cross the gap, the bridge, from the thinkable to the unthinkable. Because thought will lead us to that which basically is unthinkable. And there is no contradiction. It may be a paradoxon. Because in meditation, when you meditate, you drop even your thoughts. And it is possible. Then you reach the unthinkable, which nevertheless, you are in your core, and that is the true God. Uncreated, unmade, timeless, eternal. That is what you are, and that is the reason why you are here. To know that, to learn that. And it is a path, dear friends, that is often very painful. And in order to reduce that pain, We have the Book of Light. To those who have ears to hear, eyes to see, a brain to understand. Now, we have the outer plane and we have the inner plane. The outer plane to us is more understandable, comprehensible. Oh, this is there and there and there. Yes, but the inner plane. There's a little problem with it. How can we reach and become and understand the inner plane by detaching from the outer? And that happens during soul breath meditation. Read that little booklet, little book, Divine Message from the True God. And you will also see and experience soul breath meditation. So the truth has to be experienced with meditation and the teaching, the Book of Life. And so we are developing not outwards, but inwards, constantly more and more towards our core, which we are timeless, is timeless eternal, uncreated, anupapadaka, parentless. That is what you are. You may have heard that or hear it for the first time, that is what you are uncreated, timeless, eternal. And you deal now with that which is 
subject to time, to change, to decay. And in that friction, you become the God that you are. You are a God in the making. And it is a mystery that will be empirically developed or experienced by you. And so, the first step to understand is that we woke up. See, when you get up in the morning, you were sleeping and you wake up. Now, the entire universe was sleeping and it is reawakened. And this is why we are here. And there is no first Big Bang, as science thinks or assumes. But there is a periodical reawakening out of the ever-to-be unknown, out of the, the source, the common source of everything, into manifestation, over and over and over again. It is the cosmic breath. And it begins or reawakens out of pralaya. Pralaya. The relative reawakening of everything. And then you could say it is a beginning of things. But it is no absolute beginning because that cannot be. See, if somebody says, oh, there was a big bang, and then a five-year-old could ask what, what was before there. So it makes no sense. Truth is, and this is why science should work together with the Book of Light, truth is that out of timelessness, everything reawakens over and over and over again anew to manifest, to continue its existence from the prior Manvantara. This we call a period of activity being awake. Pralaya is a period of rest. And because as above, so below, what counts for the entire universe, that counts for you too and for everything that is in it. Everything needs to go to rest and to awake again. Believe it or not, even stones, plants, minerals, animals rest and come back in their structure. In order to understand that, we have to follow the teaching now. But let's stay for the moment with an, a, a comparison, analogy, that you go to bed, which, and in the next morning, you wake up again, and you are active again. And before you were still there, you were just latent. You were in pralaya. You know? This is how you could or should see it. Now, that with which we all are connected cannot be explained in terms of everything, of any language, everything. Not even Sanskrit. We teach Sanskrit. Everything cannot be explained. Neti, neti. But, but, you can become it. It is a mystery. Thinking leads you to it. But then you have even to drop your thinking. And this is the mystery. And we can experience that, we can train that during meditation. Soul breath meditation. And if we do that regularly, sooner or later, we will not even be disturbed any longer by thoughts. Even thoughts will vanish, will disappear. And you are still there. This is a timeless, eternal immortal being. And by eternal and immortal, I do not mean something that was born and will live forever. Such a thing does not exist, no matter how much Christians and Muslims or others would wish for an eternal life in heaven. Such a thing does not exist. Even the, the heavens have to vanish. Just read your Bible correctly. Just read your Quran correctly. It says the heavens will be rolled in like a scroll. So what then is eternal? Eternal is that which never was created. And we will come to that. In due time you will understand. For now, let me tell you. 
Only, there's only three. Three things are there. Uncreated, timeless, eternal. The source, the common core of everything, all beings, and root matter, called Mula Prakriti in Sanskrit. Root matter. These three interact periodically. And the spirits, we call them monads, dive into Mula Prakriti and surround themselves according to the state of desire or trishna with forms, be it from the highest angel to the lowest worm. It depends on the awareness and the experience of that monad or that being, which has to go, this we can understand and we teach here in the way to God, through mineral kingdom many times, plant kingdom many times, animal kingdom many times, and human kingdom, human nature many times, and angel nature many times. Let me tell you another law, another fact that is unknown by science, yet sooner or later they will agree to it. Prior to physical evolution, 